Ten years ago today, on June 20th, 2012, I announced via blog post at GuyMcPherson.com that Earth was in the midst of abrupt, irreversible climate change. Because I had no income and therefore no means of conducting primary research, I reached this conclusion by citing the work of other scholars writing peer-reviewed articles. For about five years to follow, my work became reasonably well known. I traveled to deliver presentations two or three weeks each month. I delivered presentations on four continents in exchange for part of my travel expenses. Volunteers handled my schedule. I was seriously in demand, perhaps because I was honest in sharing terrible news. Or maybe it was my gallows humor. I still try to maintain a sense of humor as I report the worst news in the history of life on Earth. Others have joined me. Consider the, the case of Trent Black, a friend I've not yet met. Trent sends me relevant links with a dose of good humor. Consider this recent email message with the subject line, It's all going to hell. Here's the body of the message. Quote, Bank runs in China, wheat failures worldwide, floods or droughts, China fighting with Australia, Russia fighting with NATO in a proxy war, Russia blowing up the Ukraine wheat, too many to list. India locks down their grains, end quote. You might be thinking, that's not so funny, at least so far. And then, Trent puts a funny spin on our dire straits, quote, I know this is a very unpopular topic, but cannibalism, they eat the grains, we eat them, end quote. I suppose humor is required in my situation. After all, my continued ability to educate the masses has been destroyed by a coordinated defamation campaign. I'm libeled and slandered on a daily basis. In addition, my work has been heavily plagiarized to the great financial benefit of Davis, David Wallace Wells and others. Wallace Wells gets a best-selling book in an HBO series based on my work while I'm at the receiving end of a years-long defamation campaign that would make Johnny Depp weep. Like Johnny, I have less credibility and public influence because of deliberate, ongoing libel and slander. Unlike Johnny, I don't have the power of the media or the bank account to launch a six-year campaign to clear my name on a public stage for all to see. The law firm I hired saw right through the defama defamatory lies and promised me victory in court only if I were willing to wait several years and pay nearly a million dollars in legal costs. We opted instead for a public cease and desist order that cost $70,000 and was ignored by the likes of Derek Jensen and others. I was close to solving this problem about 18 months ago, thanks to a renowned attorney working pro bono on my behalf. But then, in early December 2020, my ability to use the U.S. judicial system died with renowned attorney Gerald Maples in the Bahamas. If you know an attorney willing to work pro bono on behalf of nearly 8 billion people, please let me know. The coordinated defamation campaign that targeted my character struck overnight during the summer of 2017. Within two weeks, my reputation had been destroyed by vicious rumors and lies that ruined my relationships with my family and also my wife of many years. These lies were obviously intended to keep me from delivering important information. The allegations were never meant to, to protect unnamed imaginary individuals called victims. Five years later, and again, as in Johnny Depp's case, there have been no legal charges against me. Nonetheless, the ongoing defamation campaign continues to keep the populace from knowing the truth about our planetary crisis. From its beginning, this was the only goal of the campaign, to keep the populace from knowing the truth about our planetary crisis. To this day, internet algorithms keep my videos and blog posts from reaching a large audience. My goal has always been to educate the populace about evidence discovered by others. I will continue my efforts as long as I am able, despite the ongoing attempts of defamatory liars who want to keep you in the dark. Since that summer day in 2017, each time I am invited to go on a speaking tour or submit to an interview with corporate media, the person sending me the invitation receives an email message with links to blog posts. The blog posts are filled with lies. How did the source of the libelous posts know within a few hours that I had received an invitation? I have no idea. The plug posts sent to people asking me to speak or interview contain lies about me and also invented screenshots of Facebook messages. About a year after the defamation began, I discovered that the invented Facebook messages could be easily created. By this time, my partner of more than 35 years had betrayed and divorced me. My entire immediate family joined her. My dad died believing I was a sexual predator. My mom and siblings still believe the lies based on a sophisticated defamation campaign. I'd like to remind you that my work depends completely on the research of others. 
peer-reviewed papers still form the basis of my work. In addition, I continue the time-consuming, expensive process of producing peer-reviewed papers on the topic of abrupt, irreversible climate change. Several years after I reached the conclusion that Earth was in the midst of abrupt, irreversible climate change, the stunningly conservative Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reached the same conclusion. The IPCC report on October 8, 2018 concluded that, quote, Global level rates of human-driven change far exceed the rates of change driven by geophysical or biosphere forces that have altered the Earth system trajectory in the past, end quote. Nearly a year later, an IPCC report released on September 24, 2019, concluded that an overheated ocean was responsible for the irreversible nature of climate change. In other words, the vaunted IPCC has reached the same conclusion I did, albeit several years after me. I have never heard about any of the IPCC authors being deplatformed with a coordinated defama defamation campaign. I've not heard about any of the IPCC authors being called sexual predators. Have you? Of course not. It hasn't happened. I'm reminded of a line from American science fiction writer Robert Heinlein, quote, being right too soon is socially unacceptable, end quote. In my case, being right too soon cost me everything, except my integrity and the love of a few people. Very few. Adding to the lies about me, media personalities such as Tom Hartman and Associated Press writer Seth Borenstein often accuse me of giving up. Hartman and Borenstein have plenty of misinformed company. None of these people lived off-grid for more than a decade as a means of setting an informed example. Not one of them abandoned the monetary system upon realizing that it was the monetary system driving us to extinction. Indeed, I continue to do what these media personalities claim to do, which is inform people, with two major exceptions. One, I'm unpaid. And two, I tell the full truth, including evidence about aerosol masking, self-reinforcing feedback loops, and the importance of the rate of environmental change. In other words, my work differs from that of the corporate media personalities primarily in two ways. My work is freely available, and it is rooted in evidence. Not hope, not dreams, not wishful thinking. Evidence leading to the truth. Contrary to the messages I receive every day, including from the aforementioned media personalities, I'm not a quitter. I have switched from writing essays read by very few people to creating and airing videos to a much larger audience. The Nature Bat's last blog at GuyMcPherson.com has about 300 subscribers. In contrast, The Nature Bat's last YouTube channel has about 16,000 subscribers. If I can reach several thousand additional people via YouTube than I can via essays, I'll opt for the videos. In nearly all cases, the evidence I present via video is supported with links to the sources of evidence within the video or at GuyMcPherson.com. I'm frequently told that there is absolutely no way humans can go extinct in a decade, or five years, or two, two years. Au contraire. In an episode titled Edge of Extinction, Examples of Rapid Extinction, released on this channel in, on March 20th, 2019, the San Benedicto rock wren went extinct within a span of two weeks. The San Benedicto Island, for which the bird is named, is volcanic, and the volcano erupted on August 1st, 1952. On that day, the San Benedicto rock wren lost habitat. Bear in mind that the bird could fly. It undoubtedly flew to the nearby islands and mainland, albeit to no avail. When the volcano blew, habitat was lost. The last individual of this species died shortly thereafter, thus marking its extinction. We are not birds. We cannot move to another planet when we lose habitat on this one. Most of us can barely make a sack lunch, much less prepare for a flight that will take several generations to complete. Human animals will therefore go extinct shortly after human animals lose habitat on Earth. As witnessed by the rapid loss of habitat leading to millions of people dying each year already, our extinction does not lie far in the future. Earth's energy balance has been changed. Here are a few headlines from among many that make this point more clearly than anything else I could say. I'll read the source, and then the headline. Each of these stories ap appeared within the last two weeks, and most of them came to me from Trent Black. Los Angeles Times. Major water cutbacks loom as shrinking Colorado River nears moment of reckoning. Learning English. U.S. faces small wheat harvest as world supplies shrink. Los Angeles Times. California officials offer grim outlook for 2022 fire season. 
Oklahoma State University, Western Oklahoma faces wheat crop devastation. Reuters, up to 300,000 tons of grain in destroyed warehouses, Ukraine Deputy Agriculture Minister says. Seeking Alpha, get ready for $150 to $200 oil and higher inflation. Yahoo News, we beg God for water. Chilean lake turns to desert, sounding climate change alarm. Quartz, the world's top liquefied natural gas exporter is facing a gas shortage. Washington Post, extreme weather is tormenting every U.S. region, and it's far from over. As I have reported previously in this space, with an article from Scientific American titled, Humans are Doomed to Go Extinct, humans are doomed to go extinct. According to the author of this paper, our extinction will come somewhere between really quickly and really, really quickly. The essay was written by Henry G., evolutionary biologist and senior editor at Nature, a renowned peer-reviewed journal. My video on this topic was posted in this space on June 6, 2022, entitled Science Snippets, the Ninth, Probably, and Final Species of Human. G is not alone, of course. Neither am I. Even USA Today, perhaps the most popular and dumbed-down newspaper in the divided states of America, released a story on April 9, 2022, headlined, UN Climate Change Report Says We're on the Path to an Unlivable Planet. We did it! The final three words of the headline appear in all capital letters and are followed by an exclamation mark. We did it! Here's the subhead. That's right, folks. After decades of doing our level best to destroy the planet we inhabit, we're finally on the cusp of success. So then, on to the title of this video, I'm done. What exactly am I done with? I stopped allowing comments at GuyMcPherson.com when I moved to Belize. I knew I could never keep up with libelous comments while living in a country with poor telecommunications infrastructure. I stopped allowing comments from anonymous trolls on this platform, aka the troll farm, when the burden became too much to bear. As I have made clear for years, I am here to teach. I'm not here to waste my time with defamatory fools intent upon wasting my time, and yours, by writing irrelevant nonsense. My life, and probably yours, is too short for that. And yet I'm still accused, by people who really ought to know better, of being an extremist as I continue to quote the peer-reviewed work of other scholars. Most days, I wonder why I bother. Surely the few people interested in living their lives as if their lives are short already understand my message. As I contemplate my retreat from public service every single day, my inner teacher takes hold. I am a teacher, as I have said and written many times. Teaching is not merely what I do. A teacher is what I am. It seems I cannot overcome my inner teacher merely to make my life easier. Withdrawal from public service is beyond me, at least for now. So, at least for now, you're stuck with the videos we produce in this space. Well at least the few that sneak past the algorithms designed to hide the videos on the Nature Bats Last channel. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly though, thanks for watching.